Hey, Landon, cousin Mike. I see you're already here, waiting on me. Or you were here. We'll see if he's sticking around. Alright, we'll play some, uh, use under branding. Play some music real quick. Waiting on some to show up. We got one now. Uh, if you're watching the recorded version of this, get to at least five minutes in, maybe a little further. Get everybody on board. Keep up with y'all.
almost ready. I'm just waiting for a few people to show up. I think the encore, you'll start like that. I had one person for a minute. I talked to myself. Great. Oh, nobody. Oh. The AI is working. It's not real smooth, but it is working. Version of put a message in the comment. We could jump 10 minutes ahead today. I mean, I've gotten better at hosting uh, a live stream every Tuesday. So, uh, I've put messages out there on Facebook. You know, I did put regular messages. Or did I? Maybe no. No, I didn't. That was my favorite. Alright, now you can start the party because we got somebody here. I don't know if we're just turn the music down without turning it off. Okay. 
try this other music. This comes with it. Okay, that'll work. I can talk over that, I think. Alright, so hopefully we'll get some more people joining in after a few minutes here. Um, I have cleared out there on Facebook and Facebook Messenger and, and just on Facebook in general now. Um, what we've got right now is the kill tanks, uh, both filler next are installed, uh, vent tube on the passenger side is installed now. The vent tube wasn't installed before, so I really couldn't drive it. I have driven it a little bit, but it's job about that. Uh, driver's side is plumbed up, and it just need to, I've got all the fittings made up on the driver's side. I just need to get the hose pump for the vent tube, and that's how it'll be done. Uh, I've, what I've done is the filler necks used to stick out, come in from the sides under the bed, uh, which saves all your bed space available for everything else you want to use it for, but uh, with them being pretty much horizontal, it's very difficult to get gas in there, even at a gas pump, and forget about pouring gas out of a gas can into the tanks, because it would, 99% of it would just go back onto it. So now I've got them going down through the bed, making a 90 degree bend, and going to the tank in another 90 degree bend, trying to get a little bit of an angle in the middle, but uh, at least you can get gas into it, and it'll go into the tank. Uh, either pour it in or on the pump. So both uh, sides have now have a two and a half inch hole punched through the uh, bed and going into the tanks that way. So it took a little bit of extra fittings, uh, some minings and stuff. So I've taken and cut up multiple kits worth of, or multiple vehicles worth of uh, the filler necks uh, to get those installed. You know who I forgot? Hit the like button. Uh, let's see. Get this. Time for a word from our sponsor, Dual Fuel Corn and Liquor. The only corn liquor with, with proof works and an octane rating. May cause temporary or permanent blindness. Please drink responsibly. May cause excessive internet shopping as well. Alright, back to our show. We're on mute music, I guess. Oh, we got two people on here now. Let's see our comment section. Uh, yep, Landon's back. Thanks. Thanks, Cousin Mike, for coming back. Um, not a big show going on yet. Uh, just I was a little bit late as it was, getting getting set up out here in the shop and getting the camera plugged in. I am using the AI camera. As you can see, it's kind of different, a little jumpy. It's like having a drunk cameraman. Uh, I, maybe... The more I use it, maybe it'll smooth out. It's acts like, to me, it looks like the, when it decides to move, it's having to overcome, like, sticky gears. So maybe the more often that it moves, then maybe it'll smooth out. And I'm also thinking if I was further from the camera, it might smooth out better. We'll see. I'm checking it. <laughs> yeah, that is a little smoother. Um... The further I am from the camera, I get zoomed out a little bit. So, you know, I, I guess if anything, it, it, you know, you're supposed to change your, you know, camera or whatever positions this, that, and the other when you're editing. So maybe it's kind of taking some of that and just chopping it up a little bit for you, make it a little bit more like a, oh, what's that crazy guy that treads all the Lambos and catches them on fire and gives away Lambos if you can keep the train from hitting them and stuff. Uh, Mr. Beast, yeah, that guy. Um, so anyway, Cousin Mike, I was just talking about, uh, I've got the filler necks on both sides installed, uh, vent tube on the passenger side for the filler necks installed, uh, driver's side still have to get the vent tube installed, I was waiting on paint to dry last night, and I just got to grab some 5 8 hose clamps, and that part will be done. Um, got news recently that it looks like I'll be going to uh, Casper, Wyoming for a while. Uh, I know that's a little bit closer to your neck of the woods. Uh, Mike, and uh, debating about whether I'm going to haul the camper up there with the truck or not. I uh, did talk to my landlord, and he's going to cut me a pretty decent storage rate for leaving the truck and the camper park here. 
Uh, but if I get the camper up there, at least I could probably save money on rent. So we're looking at that idea. Uh, but then my coworker would have to find their own way. But right now we're looking at both of us having to split uh, maybe a Airbnb or something because the hotels up that way are pretty darn expensive for for no reason other than it's the only city there. And I don't know. They just like to charge 180 bucks a night when our per diem is only 140 bucks a night. Uh, we did look into Airbnbs. They started around 40 bucks a night and go to 60 or so, uh, which is pretty decent. Um, and if we could get uh, maybe a two-bedroom one and split it up, it would be perfect. And then I wouldn't even have to tow this. I would like to, just for the sake of moving it, getting it out of the garage and stuff. But even if I get the truck out of the garage, I'm going to have a pile of tools and parts left over here. So I'd still wind up paying rent on that. Um, so I have made some progress. I just got back from uh, Denver uh, Saturday. I would have gotten home here uh, about two hours earlier. Uh, yeah, you got to go to Salt Lake tomorrow. Uh, something for the military. Uh, got to go to the VA. Am I correct? Um, but the my work truck got broken into Saturday morning around 6:15. Uh, the guy was ballsy enough to to make five trips back to my truck. Uh, took him a total of about 30 minutes to uh, to empty out my back seat of all my tools and personal property and even my dirty laundry. Uh, I think that was pretty dirty of him to do me that way to steal my underwear and stuff. Because uh, that was the majority of the underwear I had that were the nice ones. So, and you got my favorite pair of jeans. But, uh, they'll get replaced eventually. But, um, so that's, I mean, I've gotten back, I've gotten back in the rhythm of try, trying to work on this thing in the evenings. And, uh, I am making some progress. Uh, I know the wiring here under the hood, eh, I could probably wrap it. I could leave it as is for now. Either way. I've uh, got everything that I can plug in uh, working between the ECU and the 2001 gauge cluster. Uh, I've used it in the past. It's not pretty. It doesn't fit right. And uh, it is it is what it is. It's, it's going to have to work for now until I can get some sort of digital dash sorted out and, and plugged in. At least I've identified all the wires that go to it, the digital dash, you know, power. You know, on the speedometer, uh, tachometer, left blinker, right blinker, high beam, low beam. You know, I've got all that stuff sorted out, and I've labeled them with a little label maker, put that on each wire individually. So when the time comes to get a different dash in here, uh, it won't be plug and play so much, but I'll be ready to plug and play because all the wires are already identified. Um, another problem I had and I was fighting with for a while, the rear uh blinker bolt blinker rear blinkers and brake lights were not working uh <laughs> not going commando just uh i did get to go to duluth trading company the day before and so i had those three brand new pairs of underwear in my room and not in the truck uh, those who know me know i lock my work trucks religiously uh don't take more than two steps away from them before locking them uh, and usually I'll hit the lock button again just to make sure I hear it chirp. So I know it's locked. Because that extra button, you know, an extra press of a button. Tell, you know, first time you press it, you hear the truck lock. Second time you press the button, it always chirps, which tells you it's locked. Uh, it tells you, hey, you've already locked it. Which I'm fine with that. I'd rather know that I locked it than walk away and maybe I forgot to press the button. Um, so we're thinking one of two or three things was the scenario on what happened there. Uh, there was a vehicle parked next to my vehicle between midnight and 1. I don't think they were a guest at the hotel, but they did go in the hotel. I don't know how they got in, but maybe they were an employee there or friends of a guest. Maybe they were delivering stuff. They went in, come back, threw some stuff in their trunk. But they meandered around the, between the two vehicles for a while. So I'm thinking maybe they used a Slim Jim to defeat the locks and get into the truck and then come back a couple hours later. So it would be so obvious it was that vehicle that was the people that had locked the truck. Two, I think maybe somebody just happened to have some sort of key or there's other electronic devices you can get on Amazon that will clone codes or pretend to be a you know, key fob. And they just went around the parking lot until somebody's door opened. 
and then come back later to get to the truck. Option three wasn't even my idea. One of my my employees came up with this one. Could be a disgruntled ex employee and a friend of it, another disgruntled ex employee, uh, because one of them was actually the previous driver of this vehicle. He could have possibly already had a spare key to the truck and just didn't release it to me when he gave me the truck and mailed that key to somebody. The other ex-employee actually lives in Denver, so he could have mailed that key from Kansas to Denver. That could, guy could have had the key to the truck, went there, unlocked the truck, got right in, got it. Because the stuff that was stolen other than the laundry was very work-specific stuff. And like one of the tools, uh, it's a very small tool, but very expensive, about 450 bucks. And I would love to get a pet honey badger. <laughs> um, but this one tool about 450 bucks and no one would have known it was there or what it was unless you work on wind turbine blades and I think it was more just to be an irritant because uh, if you're not working on blades you would never need this tool um, and then I think the stealing of my clothes because they were disgruntled ex-employees they just did that to piss me off so um, that's what's going on those are my three thoughts on that either way they got some very used, worn out tools for the most part. Uh, I thought they got a whole bunch more tools, uh, harnesses and stuff. But fortunately for me and my company, I'd already stuck those in the locking toolbox in the bed of the truck a couple days before. And uh, uh, so those tools were found later safe in the bed of the truck the whole time. So the Kestrel, again, that was an irritant. The company can replace that. The harness. That's an irritant. It was an old worn out harness. I already had two and a half years on it. It only has a few years left on it. And it was dirty. So they got a dirty harness. They can keep it, whatever. The company will replace that. Now my pet my papper, which is breathing apparatus, is a full face helmet that's got a blower that blows filtered fresh air into there. Keeps me from inhaling dust and uh, chemicals. Yeah, that was a pretty pricey tool. I have parts of another one. I can put one together again. Uh, I don't think the company's going to be replacing mine because that was my personal tool. And then the clothing. You know, I got clothes. I'll buy more. My wife already knows. I will buy more more clothes. Uh, and I always do. Uh, yep. I'm going to go ahead and put that on screen. If you get a honey badger, it will protect your truck. I would love to get one of those. And Mandy agrees. She says I would love to get one of those. And it'd probably be more civilized than our children. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I like this camera better. It's got, as far as video quality, I mean, it's got higher definition. You can see the, the mustache a little bit better. Uh, got a little bit of glare coming from the light back there, but I'll stand in front of it. I'm not lying about the, the honey badger would be more be better behaved than our, our kids. So, you turn this thing on because it's in my pocket. All right. So, uh-oh, we lost somebody temporarily. <laughs> All right, Cousin Mike's got a good point there. Due to the rising cost of clothing, uh, he might become a nudist. I, I, I pray for the people at, at the VA, or a, at least in Idaho there. Uh, don't they have some nudist colonies out there? Okay, it looked like somebody dropped out for a split second, but they came right back. Uh, you know what? It's, oh goodness, um, probably only had people for a good 10 minutes now. Uh, let's see, when did y'all jump in? 7, seven 17? Yeah. Uh, yeah, about 15 minutes in. Um, Landon, you got some buddies you could invite. I'd appreciate it. Um, <laughs> Uh, I do not have more expensive clothes than you. Mandy was in stealth mode. I, I get you. Well, I, I do like my clothes. I do get some clean. The, the most, actually, Mandy will agree with this. One of the things that we didn't realize until a few hours after I'd left, uh, one of the things that they did manage to steal, my uh, Jack Stand and Cinder Blocks t-shirt. It was in my laundry. 
Well, yeah, my boots, they're about 300 bucks a pair, and I buy Red Wings. Takes me about two years to break them in. They last me about three to five years. <laughs> Closer to five years. Um, actually, the boots I have on are probably four and a half years old. Oh, we got everyone is on Rob and Buff Del Campo's lives. Where's, uh, where's their live at? I mean, I might just jump on theirs, and if they have a link up, I'll jump in there. Uh, I was aiming for Tuesdays because at the time, there didn't seem to be a lot of people having Tuesdays. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, I got the, that done, got that done. I'm trying to think of what else. Um, right now, I'm waiting. I'm not really waiting. I've been looking for. There's one little metal tab that bolts onto the brake pedal assembly, and that's the one that actuates the brake light switch. Um, I'm waiting to find that because that will make my truck drivable. Right now, if I plug my wiring in and drive down the road, my brake lights will stay on um, because there's nothing to turn the switch off. Go when you can, never have an open slot. That's right, because there is never an open slot. There's too many people out here trying to do their live streams. Um, but that I went, checked all the wiring, recrimped all the the uh, the wires, and uh, you know, used heat shrink, watertight connections everywhere I could. Uh, checked the wiring from front to back. All the wires checked out good. And I finally found the problem was the connector uh, where the wiring harness connects to the steering column. Those connectors were corroded. Uh, got in there and cleaned them up a little bit. Put a little bit of metal polish on a toothbrush and cleaned it up. And then sprayed it down with a little bit of uh, brake cleaner because I don't have any uh, contact cleaner. And uh, that got that up and running. And then it's just a matter of fixing that. The little thing for the switch so we'll be able to clean off all the crud on the bed and take it for a spin as soon as i get that one little tab installed so um i did put out some videos while i was in denver i was there for a total of two weeks and i think I put about two and two maybe three videos together a couple of shorts and a bunch of posts so very productive that way because i wasn't here to actually work on the truck i even did a live stream last tuesday from the hotel room had terrible backlighting because uh, the hotel rooms in general they don't give you an overhead light they just have a bunch of lights sitting around and their lighting sucks so in the future I might pack uh, my LED I've got some LED lights specifically for photography and they make good lighting for video videos as well so I'll remember to pack those when I go on my other trip um, so it looks like I'll be in uh, Casper for around 90 days, a whole quarter. Uh, I'm going to try to return here when I can to work on the truck, but it is a nine hour drive. So it's going to suck either way. Um, but uh, I probably have a few weeks worth, of, probably months worth of footage that I've already recorded. They're on external hard drives. And I'm actually trying to get a small computer. Uh, set up to edit video and I think that computer will actually run better than this laptop that I've been using. I do have a desktop but it's huge and it doesn't travel very well. So I've got a mini desktop that was a high performance gaming system when I bought it. Uh, it is a good, I don't know, eight years old or so now. And uh, But I did just upgrade, I tripled the amount of RAM in it. Uh, it needed a new BIOS, whatever the battery inside of it. And uh, got that up and running. Um, got it running in Windows again because it was, I had it locked to where it wouldn't take updates. And then I had to force it to take updates. Got that up and running. I backed up everything on it. And now I've just got my Linux operating system more up and running on it today. And that took a majority of the day. So we got Lone Wolf, we got Cousin Mike, and we got Mandy. Uh, we had a fourth person jumped in for a little bit. Uh, don't know who it was though. But, um, take a short break and we'll go, uh, throw something in my camper. Um, I'll throw some music on right while I do that. 
and then I'll be right back. Um, we'll discuss some of the stuff. We'll reiterate what we talked about last week as well. And uh, we'll go from there. I'm trying to think of some more topics to go on. Be right back. Right, I'm back. Sorry about that. What comments? There's a couple. Back to the comment section. Or the peanut gallery. Yeah. All right. So last week, we discussed making a Toyota truck into a low lux. Uh, this is supposed to be a, a scale or 164th, whatever, Toyota Hilux that they've made into the low lux. Well, it just so happens I have two of these trucks. Both of them are four wheel drive. And, um, um, but I have the bodies. Uh, you won't be using much of the body, just the front fender hood and cab and parts of the, do the doors and uh, if you notice it's got light strips above the blue thing there and a light strip up at the top of the windshield that's pretty easy you know you can go to any uh, place that sells light strips and put those on you know some tubing in the back uh, there shows as a mid-engine uh, we have contemplated doing it as mid-engine I think Matthew was the first person to bring that up he says you know, launch mounted mid engine. Ooh, caught it. It just tried to roll off your laptop. But the the fun there would be um, to because I do have access to an eight one that we know runs. Get the eight one. So uh, 
I was thinking 4L80 behind it. Uh, then the idea of it's going to be mid-engine, do um, one of the Cadillac um, transaxles. But one of the Cadillac transaxles we were looking at is made for kind of like the Corvettes where you got front engine with the rear trans transaxle. Uh, so they use a torque tube to go through there. Um, guess we could short couple it. Uh, the other idea would be just use a standard like 4L80 and maybe some sort of, uh, I think we even came up with using the Toyota rear diff because the Toyota rear diff instead of 9 inch, I think it's 10.5 inches for the Tundras. So because the Mike's talking about, he, uh, he did a dance on one of his, I guess, live streams. And something gave him a full 30 cents. And some people propositioned him. Make it stick, Jeff, unleash full power. Well, I know for the drag strip, uh, automatics actually get are better at putting the power down because that, that torque converter turns into a torque multiplier almost. Um, so we are looking at, that's a possibility, but I'm going to have a very limited amount of time to one gather parts two do all the work uh this thing's still kind of drivable um so um that and i'd need to borrow drive this all the way home pick up the truck or the toyota work on the truck or just do the work on the toyota there maybe uh i've got a few r and r's between now and september um Oh, that's the one I was trying to show. Um, the Lego Challenges is what he's talking about. He was talking about it last night on his live stream. Um, I guess it's where they where they dump water on themselves. They're supposed to take a shower or whatever, and they dump water on themselves. And so he did one where he got out in the uh, snow and ice and, and dove into the snow, if I remember right. <laughs> All right. So... I've got to, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do the, the low lux this year, but it's an idea for the channel. It's definitely have a chunk of the parts. Uh, transmission will have to come by and rear end or transaxle will have to come by. Um, thinking all this major parts could be sourced from a junkyard and then probably just do a custom tube chassis of some sort. Uh, would be faster than trying to make some of the suspension fit the chassis that I have. I've run into that in the past. When you're trying to figure out, hey, my my frame was this wide, and you know I've got an engine that's supposed to be set on a frame that's this wide, you know, and, and trying to make those parts fit sometimes is a challenge. Uh, I think if you could just lay all the parts out on the ground and start welding up pieces and and put it all together, I think you go the project might go faster. He's looking at getting his Impala on the road. So, um, yeah, with me being out of town for the next 90 days, it's going to challenge me for one, getting the, well, I've got some footage that I can edit and get out. Two, I could probably take some footage locally, whatever I could do. Um, try to hit the road and maybe visit some other places, other people, other car shows, whatever I could do to get footage. Uh, maybe come back here on the weekends and get some footage. Uh, Receiver hitch on the Thunderbird. How many of those T-Birds are you up to? I can get this thing to operate here. There we go. Wouldn't click. Um, I, I've heard you talking about you had parts from this and parts from that the other night. I know you got the speedometers you, you find on different abandoned vehicles. You got a pile of crusty speedometers. I saw that yesterday. I was I was listening but not watching so intently because I was actually out here working on stuff too. And uh, it's difficult if you want to jump on your buddy's live streams and and still have a live stream and still work on your project and still have a full time job. So you kind of have to play a careful balance there where sometimes you just put the the audio on and listen to to what people are talking about and uh, you know peek at the screen every now and then when you can. I'd like to actually maybe set up a, a large screen TV in here where I could see it from multiple angles, unless I'm under the truck. But, you know, that, that'd that be the ultimate, have a big man cave, you know, a flat screen or something where you could see it while you're working. 
you know, look up and see the comments and, and, and see what they're talking about. Uh, speaking of, um, a lot of people uh, have jumped on. I didn't realize how many of us from the No Name National group uh, have jumped on there, but um, Functional Histories. Uh, he's been working on several people's project cars for their channels, and I've commissioned him to do the same for me. And I took some of the worst pictures of this truck. I should have taken older pictures of the truck when it still was all yellow. Uh, right now I've got a fender that's kind of a, it's, it's primer gray. I didn't do it. All right. It's primer gray, but it kind of has a bluish tint to it. Uh, passenger rear door is blue. Came off of a blue Suburban. Front right fender came off of a blue truck. And uh, so it's it's a mismatch of colors. Uh, I did, uh, I've had these tool, toolboxes, aluminum toolboxes, for several years since I was up in Nebraska. I bought a pair of toolboxes that kind of mirror image each other, or they're identical. So I've always had one on the passenger side, and so for the photos I took for him, I went ahead and threw the other one in place. I didn't even bolt it down. I took the other toolbox out, threw that one in there, so they I got mirror image toolboxes, and then I uh, had the fifth wheel hitch on there. And he went so far as to model the – I've got a sheet metal bending brake that I bolted to the bed of my truck because I'm doing sheet metal work still on it. Well, I was doing sheet metal work way before I decided to do the 8.1. You know, I knew I was eventually going to want to do an engine swap. I was kind of wanting diesel uh, for the torque and stuff. You know, Cummins 12 valve would be a, a lot of torque and a lot of horsepower, even real easy, just by cranking it up. Uh, the problem is, is those things are very, very expensive. And every junkyard knows what they got, and every hillbilly and redneck knows what they got. Whether it's good or not, they're still going to charge you top dollar for it. Um, came across this 8 1 with the Allison. Because one of my buddies suggested it. He's like, throw an 8 1 in there. You know, if not, get you an LS. And I put the word out there to a buddy who was looking to do some other trading with me. Uh, he backed out of the trade, but he did find me this motor and transmission at a swap meet. And I think I had to send Mandy up there. Um, yep, hi, Mom. And uh, I, I think what we did is I think he got the guy's number. And I sent Mandy to, with the money. I think him and Mandy went there, paid the guy, and then the guy delivered it to the house, dropped it off. And uh, it took a while because he thought he had the ECU and TCU with him, and he didn't. Uh, it took several months to get the, the ECU out of him, and it took about a year to get the TCU out of him because he swore up and down he gave us the TCU the day he dropped it off. And I was like, he didn't even give us the ECU when he dropped it off. So, like I said, it took about a year to get the TCU out of him. but it does run, drive, it goes through the gears. It still thinks it's a UPS truck because I haven't done any programming to it, but it does run and drive, so I can't complain there. Got a couple of oddball engine codes, or I think it's um, traction control or something like that. You know, because the UPS truck did actually have some form of traction control. I think it just had a little thing on the drive shaft that sensed whether the drive shaft was spinning with the transmission or not. But, yeah, whatever. It, it if that's the worst I get, then that's the worst I've got to deal with. Right now, it, like I said, it does run and drive. I'm still waiting to get the finishing touches on that. I do have uh, suburban front uh, captain seats instead of the bench seat. Got a console between. It's not even bolted down. And then I do have the 6040. I, I would rather just a bench seat for the back. But I got the 6040 from the suburban as well. And uh, hey, hey. He knows who he is. Um, so we've got those parts in or available to put in. I'd have to take and clear out the whole back floorboard of all the tools and stuff that are in there right now. But that might be a, a very near future project. Uh, not to say the upholstery on any of the seats is in really great shape. Um, but they're there. I could throw a seat cover on them. Uh, maybe do another seat cover video because my seat cover video from two years ago it still gets views every month, and it's amazing to see that, and I like that it's still doing that. Yeah, I, I know what I want to do with the gauge cluster, uh, but I don't have the money to do it. Right now, I'm literally just going to be driving around with the 01 gauge cluster sitting on the steering column. I might secure it with some zip ties to hold it up. 
because uh, it doesn't fit in the dash, and I'm not going to try to cut out any of the metal. But it, it's it does run. All right, uh, thanks, cousin Mike, for stopping by. If I can get it to show, there we go. Got to click right on it. Well, it's still not. Maybe if you do that, come on. All right, this thing is not active. Well, Cousin Mike's leaving. I can't get it to let me control the messages, which ones are on the screen. Yeah, I'm going to do some more of the Mexican blanket seat covers. Uh, it looks like they have some for the, the bench seat or the bucket seats. There we go. Finally. I don't know why it wasn't clicking when I clicked on it. But, um, yeah, it's... Um, like I said, I, I could get Mexican blanket seat covers, and you know they're cheap. I think I even have a spare one for the benches. So if I had to cut one up and modify it and whatever, I might do that. Uh, there's a little stretch to them, not a lot, but let's see if I can get some for the buckets up front. And now it's not letting me. There we go. Yeah, so that's that's what that is. Uh, I, like I said, just throw some seat covers on it for now. They do have entire upholstery kits uh, it, for the Suburban seats because I've got the Suburban buckets and the bench for the 6040. Uh, that kit's about a grand, and it comes with even the third row seat. Uh, I can't. It's cheaper to get that kit than to try to buy the parts individually. So. Unless I have to pawn a upholstery shop lo somewhere locally that wants to do the stuff for cheaper. Yeah, that's true. Um, but, um, so yeah, that's what the, you know, the seat covers, you know, I, I kind of like the Mexican blanket seat covers. And, you know, they, they, they tell you that I care about my truck. Enough to spend a little bit of money on it, but not so much that you need to break into it and steal my stuff, like they did in my work truck last week. <laughs> so uh, that's good for you know that will do for now until I can come up with the funds to do the in entire interior. Uh, Mike, I don't want to do the vinyl floor mat, one piece floor mats again. They to me they once you get water under them, the water doesn't go away, and then it rots out the floorboards. Ask me how I know. Um, because this one had two layers of vinyl format on it. So they really doubled down on not letting that floor breathe at all. Uh, it, it was breathing all right with the holes under the bottom. But uh, so, yeah, some of y'all weren't here for that part of the story. Uh, last week, uh, Saturday, uh, last two weeks, I was out of town work, uh, doing some training in Denver. Uh, Saturday morning, I was supposed to leave Denver, walk out to my truck, my work truck, and I see one of my belts laying on the ground. Do a quick investigation and find out that somebody had gotten into my truck and stole a bunch of my tools, personal property, and even my laundry. Um, and then two theories about that. Either they was a vehicle that parked near my vehicle, adjacent to my vehicle, and used maybe a Slim Jim to get in. Or somebody just went fishing with electronic, maybe a key fob or a simulated key fob, and my vehicle just happened to be the one that unlocked. Uh, or maybe it was an ex-employee that's disgruntled. Got a hold of a spare key and by somebody else mailing it to him. And because uh, the stuff they stole was oddly specific to what we do as a task for work. And then the, the laundry was just like pissing on my floorboard. They did it just intentionally to piss me off. So then that's my theory. But that actually was that theory wasn't even mine. It was one of my, my techs came up with that one. Like, hey, what if it was these ex employees? They got together and teamed up. One guy mailed the other one the key because the other guy lives in Denver. And he's got a history of committing lots of crimes. So that would have been nothing for him um, as far as his rap sheet goes. Rhino line it. You know, I've done a lot of bed liner. I think it's not acting right today. Um... I've done a bed liner exterior and interior on several vehicles. I'm not against it. Uh, but in this case, I actually wanted to uh, to put carpet on because it is a little nicer and a little quieter. 
Well, the rhino line does quiet them down. Um, I do plan to put, um, they sell a sound deadening product that you paint on. And I think it's a bit thinner than the rhino line because you're still supposed to put carpet and stuff over it. And um, I think that's available from Amazon. I want to say it's about $100 for whatever size kit it is. I want to say it's roughly a gallon. <laughs> Check the flagpole to see if you can jump these back. Well, I doubt it. Uh, and the... Um, that I buy the Caraloha underwear when we're on our cruises, and they're about 30 bucks a pair. They're nice bamboo material, bamboo cotton, whatever mix that makes for a really nice, soft underwear that breathes real well. Undercoat it with full paint. That sounds interesting. Uh, like I said, I was going to potentially buy the Amazon sound deadening stuff. Instead of the, the roll on tar stuff, I hate that stuff when it comes to restoring vehicles. You always have to chip and scrape and, you know, the newest method I think is dry ice, but um, I think you just paint this stuff on and it should stop corrosion from happening to the floorboard and act as a sound deadener and uh, then I'll put carpet over that. So uh, I, I want to start up on the back side of the firewall, the inside of the firewall area, and then go through the floorboard and, and all the way to the back. Probably even in the back of the, behind the back seats. Uh, and maybe a little bit on the inside of the door skins. Uh, just to, to quieten it up as much as possible. Unless I have the windows down and want to hear it. I think the exhaust is going to be about all I really want to hear. I don't want to hear road noise. Um, uh, you know, it's not going to be completely silent. But, you know, I it just, it's an old truck. It's got enough squeaks and stuff as it is. I want to just figure out, um, um, I, I want to silence as many of the squeaks as possible, and if I get a new squeak, I want to be able to identify it and, and stop it as well. Uh, ins insulation, just run to Home Depot and grab cheap rolls for the house. Oh, just uh, maybe it's some of that rock wool. <laughs> All right, so we got Ellie Mae, we got Mandy, we got Lone Wolf's Garage. Uh, who's Jerry Rigging? I want to know who that is. Um, we had Cousin Mike. We had Mom. Uh, I meant for Matthew to get on here, but I forgot to send him a link. Uh, but we got eight people in here now. And I really didn't get anybody on until about 15 minutes in. Uh, it happened because, one, I was late getting here and setting up, which is typical for me on a Tuesday. It just never seems to be running on time. Uh, but I'm going to try to stick to a Tuesdays and maybe even add a day uh, for live streams. Double down on this stuff because it is. <laughs> All right, I should have recognized the name. Thanks, Eric. My co stars jumped into the comments section. All right, Square Body Eric. Jerry Riggings Garage. <laughs> hey, Jerry rigs everything. No, he doesn't. He does a very good job. He puts things together pretty quick. I wish I was as fast as him, but he's not trying to film stuff. Uh, and then just he, just, he has the parts, and when he gets about. When he gets about it, he gets about it. He puts it together. Um, I need to throw some pictures of your truck. The uh, what's the 79 C? What is it? C60? Um, it's had a giant flatbed on there. He managed to get the giant flatbed off of it, and he shortened the frame and wheelbase now to fit a standard dually bed, and that will be going on here very shortly, I'm sure. Uh, probably be assisting him very in the very near future bleeding the brakes um, and whatever else I know he welded up a drive shaft in one day so think about it well I know you think about you think about it for a long time and then you, you finally when you do get around to it you just you get it going uh, you know, I spent two whole evenings just putting putting the stuff together for the uh, fuel vents, you know, fuel filler neck and stuff. Fix the brakes today. Oh, you already did the brakes. All right. See, I missed out on that while I was at work. He already bled the brakes, I guess. He got those up and running. 
I know the other day he was asking me for a tubing bender, which I think was in the toolbox that got stolen out of the work truck Saturday. Um, I did have some of those spring style that just go over whatever tube you're trying to bend. And he was like, well, you know, already the, the end's already flared. It already has the fitting on it. And he finally said, you know what? Cut that off there, bend the tube, reflare it. And he did, you know, before I could go to the hardware store and come back. Uh, yeah, he, he takes it apart fast. Yeah, well, you got plenty of parked vehicles. That always helps, too. You know, uh, <laughs> and he's quick to lend me parts when I need them. And he usually gets them back in a better shape because I take it. Oh, I don't know if I'm still here or not. There we go. I think it. Which first split second, but here we go. Um, yeah, we're not quite to an hour, but we're getting there soon. I guess another 15 plus minutes will get us to an hour. Um, so yeah, I get the fuel filler next done, the wiring's done. You know, we've got the, the brake light switch just needs that one piece for the pedal. And if I can't find that piece soon, I'm just going to make a new one. I've spent enough time looking at, looking for it. But in the meantime, uh, that is helping me. Uh, I've been going through all my totes, and I've discovered several of my totes have, hey, we've got sandpaper in this tote. Hey, I've got sandpaper in this tote. Got sandpaper in this tote. Hey, I've got grinding discs in this, this, and this tote. And so I'm kind of sorting through and organizing and getting sandpaper with sandpaper, uh, grinding discs with grinding discs, and getting them much more organized and putting little labels on each, each box and tote. And then now I'm down to the hardware. Lots of nuts and bolts I've picked up from junkyards and taking this part of the truck apart and that truck apart. And, you know, I've been to three different junkyards since I started this project. I think I've taken every bolt off every truck I've gone to, uh, truck or suburban that I've taken parts off of. And so I have piles and piles of these bolts now. And but they're in this bin and that bin and the other bin. So now I'm bringing those together and getting them sorted. And then I'm going to try to take one of these nice fancy boxes or totes and Put them all away in there and, and label them real nice. So if I need that specific little pointy one or this other one that's got the nut on there, I can reach into that toolbox and have it in a minute instead of searching for this this bin, that bin, and the other bin. So that is coming along. Uh, it's making me slightly more organized, which is always a goal to be more organized and more organized. Uh, you know those CSI shows where they, you know, they've got a fuzzy picture of, you know, the criminal from a mile away, and they go, enhance, enhance, enhance. I'm going, organize, organize, organize. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying, guys. Uh, always try to get more organized. Oh, let's see. This AI camera, I don't know if y'all like it or not. I'm not sure I like it yet. <sighs> He's looking for me. AI camera. It actually has it moved on the mount. It's just moving within, I guess, its focal range. Oh. Okay, it actually did move on that a little bit. All right. Organization is a no-go for Lone Wolf. Well, I, I tend to – my biggest problem is if there's a horizontal surface, a lot of stuff gets set on it. Uh, so I do better with shelves instead of a single table uh, because I like, to, you know, individual nuts, bolts, and washers get put on this. You know, it just it gets nuts quick. So I like to be organized. I'm not very good at organizing my stuff. Um, I'm good at organizing other people's stuff. A uh, friend of mine in Abilene, when I first met him, he was trying to clean up his backyard. And he said he'd been working on it for months. And within two a weekend of hanging out with him and drinking with him, went through a good chunk of his backyard, and we could, we had an entire corner of his backyard done in a weekend. And next week we got the other corner, and then finally he let me into the shed part, uh, and that took us about three weekends. Uh, but got his backyard looking a lot better, and there was one shed he never let me go into, uh, and it was a mess, and it still is a mess because I never got to clean that clean or organize that one. But um. I want to be organized. That's. <laughs> I do try to organize, and being that I'm about to be 
gone for a bit. Um, yeah, I'm paying for Mandy's shop because I, I did organize it for her. Oh, I didn't know she actually had track tracking on which drill bits were sharp and which ones were dull. I just took them all and put them in one giant pile because they were under about this much. I say sawdust. It wasn't sawdust. It was uh, drill shavings from all the wood and plastics and stuff she drills. Bucket list. Be organized. I like that one. <laughs> so, um, yeah, um, pretty much everybody here has heard about the, the, the stuff got stolen out of the work truck. Um, I've got the fuel filler next for both sides hooked up. Uh, the vent tube for the driver's side is yet to be hooked up. I just need to go grab four or six uh, five-eighths hose clamps. And then uh, once I need, once I find that little brake light switch tab that attaches to the brake, brake pedal assembly, uh, my brake lights will be working properly. Uh, that was a connection at the steering column that was corroded, and now they are fixed. And uh, still can't find the brake thingy. No, nope. I might just grab either some sheet metal or an a piece of angle iron and uh, just get in there, drill a hole, bolt it on, and then uh, the the brake uh, brake light switch. It's on thread, so you can screw it in and out and adjust it, uh, half turn at a time. And uh, clamps on that chair, you need some. Oh, I just, man, I could, you know, I could grab a vise and grab some sheet metal and bend it and drill some holes. But I really wanted to find the original part because I've already cleaned and painted it. Uh, my gut's telling me. It's wherever I put the spare, um, I keep wanting to say power steering stuff, the hydro boost parts. Um, I got selling it's near the hydro boost parts because the hydro boost is part of the braking system. And I think I put that part with wherever the spare hydro boost parts are. But I haven't seen them lately. I forgot where I put them. Oh, hose clamps for the breather hose. Those clamps. Well, shucky darn. I might have to go steal those from you. Because those tower style ones that come on there, uh, by the time you get them off, you pretty much destroy them. Uh, or I tried putting some on the other day, and I did destroy them. So we just went with the standard screw style hose clamps to get the filler next put on. So. Fifty bucks a piece. I'll just walk. I will walk to the hardware store if I'll pay 50 bucks a piece. Thanks. <laughs> All right. What else do I want to talk about? Somebody come up with a topic. I know we talked about, we talked vaguely or briefly about the Low Lux, which is a Toyota Hilux that they, Hot Wheels have slammed and they made theirs mid engine and such and light bars on the top and roll cage with a wing on the back. But, I'm thinking that would be a fun project to make. Instead of paying somebody to make a Hot Wheels version of my vehicle, start with a Hot Wheels and make my vehicle into one. I think it would be fun. I think it would be uh, great for the channel overall. And showing up at some sort of tracks, whether it's a road race or drag race or whatever with that, uh, would be fun. And that's a goal. And tow it behind this big beast eventually. Uh, I know this is going to be a gas guzzling uh adventure but you know so does pretty much anything you tow with so why not um i did get if y'all have seen that video real quick um let's see if it'll do that let me go over here that's working uh it's not going to have toyota drivetrain in it if I do it, it's probably going to get the 8.1 because 8.1. Um, and then maybe a transaxle or a 4L80 with a short couple drive shaft and like a Toyota Tundra rear differential uh, because the Tundra differentials are cheaper uh, junkyard wise than a 9 inch Ford. And they, instead of being a 9 inch, they're a 10.5 inch ring gear from the Tundras. So they'd be more durable. 
Let's see if I can get it to come up here. Come on, camera. Chase me. Uh, some of y'all may not have seen the video. Oh, there we go. It's moving. A little at time. This remote's not. Oh, there we go. Come on, chase me. Come on. I might have hit the limits of the camera. Oh, we're going to kick this box out of the way. This toolbox here, that used to be yucky and corroded, and that was even had orange rust stains on it at one time. Um, I got it too clean. Too clean for this truck. But uh, that's what happens with my, uh, and my wife calls it my OCD. But, you know, I have this obsession with polishing and cleaning parts. Uh, cleaning them usually to paint them, but in that case it's aluminum, and I went and got it too shiny. Way too shiny for this truck. If you look too close at it, it still has the pitting. Uh, I didn't want to take that much material off. Uh, what's this? I was thinking smuggle a new Toyota out of Mexico. <laughs> Uh, well, we'll see if he could do it. And if you, yes, that's exactly it. That was our original thoughts, is to try to find that uh, 1970s era uh, transaxle from a uh, caddy. And because they, if I'm correct, they had a 400 caddy or a 500 caddy with that transaxle. Uh, so big, big cubic inch motor. I think they probably stuffed a little two barrel, you know, carburetor on it, but you know, they would have a chance at making it behind an 8 <laughs> Um I did check eBay and didn't see any of those initially. I did see, I think there's one LS powered car, modern-ish, uh, I want to say it's a Pontiac, that did use a transverse mounted V8 LS, and then still had front wheel drive. So the front wheel drive transaction. Um, with transverse mounted uh, LS style motor, uh, but I think there's some special parts for those motors that they only made for those cars, and I don't know what you'd have to do to make an 8.1 have those special parts, and I don't know what those parts would even be. Uh, might be special manifolds or special cooling parts, or special intake, I don't remember. Okay, so he's saying that those caddies came with a 500 and a 454. Well, 454 probably made more power than the 500, in a way. Of course, I'm sure they rated the 500 to be more torque and more horsepower, but probably just slightly, because it was the 70s. Everything was crap back then, you know, due to the emissions stuff. You know, once the late 90s hit and the decent fuel injection stuff started, uh, we started coming out of that smog pump era, and then eventually got to the point where you didn't even have to have EGR valves uh, due to some smart and smart electronics and careful tuning uh, done by the manufacturers. So um, That's cool. It's smart. I appreciate that they've finally gotten us back to the, to the point where things are tunable, and now the government's legislating and saying you can't do this and you can't do that, especially certain states are doing that. I'm not going to mention any names, California, uh, California, we'll call them what they are. Um, they're anti-fun. They don't even want you to have guns and stuff. So they, they're just no fun. You can't have fun. you got to pay us more taxes. Pay us more taxes. But anyway, um, listen to me ramble on for a full hour. Sorry about this, guys. Uh, what else do you want to talk about? I've talked about the everything probably twice. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, this uh, probably just going to go ahead and back this out tonight. I thought about backing it out of the way before starting the live stream, or just leave the garage door open with it just barely poking me in. Um, but yeah, I might move this tonight just for the fucking fun of it. And uh, I don't have, like I said, once I get that switch, I'll probably do, that might be what I work on later as soon as the live stream's over. So I'll go ahead and work on getting that last that part for the brake light switch. That's correct. They did not want to rev. They were known for making tremendous amount of torque. Um, 
even with their little two barrel carbs because they were made to have the two barrel carbs so they the whole intake tracked and even probably the exhaust was set up for that they just had a tremendous amount of engine so they wanted to keep the rpms down so they did everything to keep to make the torque made it quiet and fun to drive i guess you know they get you out of there quick or get you moving it was a big those 70 scatties were big vehicles so they weighed a lot so i uh, don't know how easy one of those transaxles would be to source and what kind of condition it would be in if you were able to source one um uh, i'm not counting on finding one at a pick apart uh maybe if you found a part vehicle uh i have even seen a cadillac powered motorhome that i suspected had that front transaxle uh, that way they wouldn't have to have a drive shaft running under the entire camper to the rear axle. They just sourced it from a Cadillac and put a camper on, camper shell on the back. Yeah, the AI focuses on all sorts of weird stuff. You know, I might have to give it some training. Where's that remote? Up, oh, up, oh, aim for the ceiling. It still wants to chop my head off half the time. Um, yeah, I guarantee the Caddy's always had the best AC. That was for sure. 79, the 366 takes five miles to get to top speed, but but, but a pull down house. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, so... That, those are some options. I think sourcing oddball parts uh, might limit that vehicle's ability when it comes time for whatever you're, if you're drag racing or road racing or anything like that. You break a part, you're not going to find the part. I'd rather source stuff you can get from pretty much any junkyard anywhere. And, you know, if I put a 4L60 or 4L80 transmission behind the engine, if I break one, Probably somebody out there that can even upgrade it, not just rebuild it. Or, you know, the very worst is find the nearest junkyard and go get another one. But uh, depending on how short a lifespan you got out of the first one. Uh, so that that's some thoughts, food for thought. And my game plan with that project is um, keep it somewhat simple. Keep it probably more modern uh, parts-wise. You know, rear differential doesn't matter what you get it out of because... Every vehicle, every truck on the road, every SUV on the road has some sort of rear differential. You can source those from pretty much anywhere, regardless of what you're using. Uh, transmission uh, wants something that can pretty much hold up to the torque and power of the 81. And I'm not dead set on keeping the 81, but you know, it'd be fun to do. Uh, the LSX, you know, LQ9 motors. You know, truck motors from anything, all from a 4.3 all the way to six six O's, and now I think they have a 6.1 or 6.2. Um, they bolt right onto there. So, and still use the same ECU and fuel pumps and all that fun stuff. Uh, looking for lightweight speed, there's a 327 out there. Hmm, that's between a 305 and a 350. Uh, it depends on how well built it is, uh, head wise too. Uh, I got some go fast parts on that other motor sitting there anyway. Uh, hadn't sold it yet. There's a 350 with probably some really bad rings and probably some really bad valve guides. Uh, but it has a really nice air intake and carb on it and has long tube man, uh, exhaust, uh, <coughs> exhaust headers on it that come with it. Uh, some other little Fun stuff, you know, nice polished aluminum valve covers and intake. I even have the oil pan for it. Just never went on there. So that's available for the right price if anybody really wants it. Um, if I do take this truck to Casper, uh, I'm highly doubting I will, but uh, probably slap the other door on there real quick, throw some mirrors on it, um, bolt it on even though I'm not painting anything. Um, that way, I've got the, the door that I plan to put on it that's not dented and rusted out. Throw that door on before I go, just so I can have 
it might be quieter even. It, it looks like it has less rattles. But anyway, uh, uh, pre-68, uh, was a high revving 327. Oh, it's got the small pin, um, journals. Uh, yeah, I think there was, um, I looked into that one time because I was looking for rods for a Supra and I wanted to get domestic rods instead of the Supra rods. Um, and I know there was a small pin, small block Chevy, uh, that if somebody were to grind the crankshaft of the Supra, they could actually make it the small pin Chevy, use buy a set of eight small pin rods uh, would have fit that motor and then I would have had cheaper bearings and cheaper rods uh, and lighten the crank and even potentially add more stroke to that Supra crank while they're grinding it down. Uh, it's a small roller cam block, uh, high school cast nickel, old school high, high cast High nickel cast. Okay. Took a minute to read that one. Yeah. 1950s 327. Okay. Yeah, the high nickel helps. Uh, means it survives longer, usually. And the rings don't gouge into the cylinders as much, too. Uh, 58-ish. Okay. Well... I think I'm going to try to use the 8.1. I do have a game plan for getting the 8.1 up and running faster than this last time. Well, here we go. Uh, we're running up right about an hour of uh, live streaming since everybody started jumping in. Uh, if y'all have some more topics, bring them up real quick. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to shut her down and get my dinner and then start working on this uh, brake, brake lamp switch that goes on the brake pedal. Oh, you know, I've got some more lights I can turn on in here. It's still dark. And it's getting darker outside, that's for sure. 283s are fun, too. Ah. The 327 now is what it is. Was that the mains that were smaller, or was it the rods that were smaller? Or both? On the early ones. Oh, you're funny. Discuss the meaning of life. How about the meaning of hot rodding? Or shall I save that for the next live stream? <laughs> the whole purpose behind hot rodding in general. Uh, I know there was a joke made about when I was working on the uh, RV toilet. So he says, well that that just means you're a hot rodder because I bought upgrade parts for every single part that I was replacing. I couldn't just buy the standard part, I had to buy the upgrade part. You know, the valve that keeps uh, holds uh, to colder temperatures and doesn't freeze. You know, new gaskets and this, that and the other. It just Every time I bought a part, I bought the upgrade part. The mains were the small diameter, huh? Maybe. Meaning of hot riding is the need for speed and the lust for power. <laughs> Just my two cents. Hey, we're getting there. Uh, that's always the thing is, you know, we've got to, can't just leave it stock, right? You know, once you start turning wrenches on something, that's when the, the stock goes away. Uh, we got my brother a t-shirt for Christmas a couple years ago. It says, I void warranties. Because he had a truck, and before he, he bought it from the dealership, it was a dealer demo of that model of truck. So it got a youth for a year or two. It was never registered, but it had a lot of miles on it because the dealer demoed it. And uh, But when he bought it new, um, he didn't even make it home from the dealership before he took and put a new downpipe on out behind the turbos uh, because hot rodding, <laughs> which voided his warranties. Uh, and uh, he, he blew up several motors in that truck before finally just trading it in. It was a miracle they let him trade it in. 
like a scratch that needs to be itched. Yes, sir. We gotta always work on something. That's once you do start turning wrenches on it, that's when the upgrades start happening. I was approached by somebody at work today. He said, "You work on cars, right?" I'm like, "Me? No, I don't know what you're talking about." Because usually when conversation starts with that is, "Hey, I got something I need fixed, and can you can you do it for next to nothing?" And I have enough projects in my life <laughs> to be doing those projects. Now I I do know there's some mobile mechanic YouTube channels, you know, and that that was a potential thought that you know I was like, you know, I've got the tools, I got the truck, I can throw the tools in the truck and go. If I charge the right rates, I could make some money. Uh, but you gotta gotta hit them with that up front. Um, he was asking questions. He has a around a 2007 Ram, and he can't get the front. It's those cartridge bearings that bolt to the spindle. So that cartridge bearing has all five studs on it, and then they slap the brake discs and stuff on there on top of it. He's unbolted it, but he can't get the cartridge bearing off the spindle. Oh, wait. Big hammer? Big pry bar? Heat. Go for it. Start with start with pry bars. Go to the hammer. Do both. If that doesn't work, go to the heat, and then keep the combination of the three going. Somewhere or another way you can get that thing off there. Jerry Riggins says he's got to go. He's got to be up at 2 in the morning. Oh, we'll, we'll hear you start your truck in the morning. Can make a hot rod out of toilet. Out of toilet. Well, I kind of did. <laughs> I was hot riding my RV toilet. Upgrading it. Uh, but, you know. <laughs> That's that's how it goes. You, you know, if I saw an upgrade part, I bought it. Um, and it still doesn't shut right and it veers to the left. But anyway, uh, thank you all, all for coming. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this live stream, I think, unless you guys have some more topics to, to jump onto here. <laughs> thank you very much. We got the fastest shit on the road. That's right. So thank you all for coming. Thank you all for sticking around. Thank you all for commenting. It's, uh, uh, it'd be really hard to just stand here and talk without some people commenting and helping me come along with the uh, next topic and the next topic after that. Um, so uh, I will open it up next time to, especially if you're a YouTuber or have a camera system and know how to use uh, – StreamYard, uh, you can jump on StreamYard and uh, use the link, and it'll bring you onto the live stream. And we'll be able to do a split screen where we're side by side. I've uh, been on some of them where we have six or eight people, and it's really fun to have a conversation with that many people. Uh, you kind of have to take turns, but you can pick at each other, and then it turns into like the old uh, Partridge, not the Partridge family, the uh, goodness. I can't remember the name of the show, but they always looked at each other and they're the multiple screens. And it, it's fun to, to do those. So thank you all for coming. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this live stream. And we'll see you again next Tuesday.